Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Sheila Kadir. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women at crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform the present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic reiki, meditation, angel cards, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey and a mini guided meditation for angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guest, like today's guest, Sheila Kadir, who will be telling her remarkable story of how the angels have helped her on her journey from dark times to challenging times to present day, where she is in charge of her own destiny. Now, Sheila is the entrepreneur's intuitive working with soul-led entrepreneurs in new or established businesses. Using her unique skills as a business psychic medium, NLP master practitioner and futurist, she reads the energy around the business and advises on a line strategy so that you can make the impact in the world that you want to make and a living doing the work that you love. She has a background in corporate as well as working as both a police officer and private investigator. In her spare time, she's a paranormal investigator and psychic detective. She's also the author of The Sensitive Soul Wisdom Cards, an oracle deck for everyday guidance for self-care and insight. Now with testimonials such as Sheila is an amazing authentic psychic, her readings and predictions have been very accurate and helpful for me, and I recommend her to everyone. I feel so much gratitude for Sheila, namaste. And working with Sheila was like being guided through a maze by a friend who could see around some of the corners ahead and help you decide for yourself which way to turn. So without further delay, hello, Sheila, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, I am absolutely fine today. I'm having a lovely day. <laughs> Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments or thoughts, as both Sheila and I want to be part of this conversation, so please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to it so you can get updates on all future recordings. So Sheila, why don't you tell us more about yourself and your journey with the help of the angels? Right, okay, will do. So my journey began when I was a child. I was incredibly intuitive as a child. I used to speak to my dead uncle and I told my mother things about his death that really a four-year-old shouldn't have known or couldn't have known. So I had these gifts then, but as you get older, you kind of lose it and you get conditioned. People then tell you, no, you're being silly that's not right, um, you're making it all up, it's, it's your imaginary friend again. And so you kind of lose it. So it went for a long, long time. Then life goes on. I went into corporate. I had very successful jobs. I was in marketing. Um, I worked for IT companies and telecommunications companies in um, product marketing and things like that. Now, Around this time when I was about 28, um, no, a little bit younger, 27, I met someone and uh, we entered into a relationship and I thought that this was it. You know, I was going to get married, going to have children and this was it. You know, this was the person I was going to settle down with. Now, very, very quickly uh, within that relationship, things turned quite dark so he became quite violent very very quickly so I remember going out one um, one evening I was I was studying as well so I was quite um, ambitious and academic and I was studying a diploma in management studies and a um, the diploma in marketing as well so I was studying quite hard and I went out with my college friends 
um, just as a kind of goodbye. We finished the course and I was a little bit late home. So he'd already moved in very quickly into my own home. So this was probably within about four months. And I came home. I was a little bit later than I said I was going to be. Um, but I was having a good time. I was with my friends. And when I got home, the house was completely quiet. There was no one home. So I kind of thought, oh, well, maybe he's gone out. I don't know where. And then all of a sudden, he jumped out of a cupboard. He was like hiding in the airing cupboard and started to accuse me of all sorts of things that just weren't true and started to throw things at me. Um, some of these things were quite sentimental to me as well. So like my grand's um, ornaments that my, my grandparents had given me and they all smashed, you know, they very narrowly missing my, my head. And I kind of put it down to a one-off and then think, things carried on. He'd, um, as I said, he'd moved in and we kind of then thought, well, let's plan for a, for a baby. I was getting on. I thought, I thought at, tw at 27, I thought, well, I haven't got, I've got much time left. I better, I better do it now. Um, so we planned to have a child. I fell pregnant very, very quickly. And then things really, really changed. He became very, very possessive, very jealous, um, accused me of all sorts of things. Um, you know, even if I spoke to someone, there would be the an inquisition when I got home. Um, and he became quite violent as well. So I remember one time uh, we were having an argument or there's something to do with my pregnancy. We were having a bit of a discussion about it. And I said, that's it. You know, I really don't think this is going to work. I think you ought to leave. And with that, he walked very calmly um, into the kitchen, got a knife, came back, put it to my throat, um, and then put it to my stomach and said, I'm going to cut this baby out of you. Um, and I was just, just shock you know i've never mm. ever experienced anything like that before um and you just don't know what to do and even as i'm talking about it now i can feel the triggers and i can i'm, I'm feeling the anxiety coming back um so i don't really know i can't really, because it because of what what happened mm. and the anxiety it's kind of all become a little bit of a a yeah. mum, but I stayed with him um, and he apologized and said, oh, that would never happen again. Then the next incident happened where he pushed an ironing board into my stomach and it just carried on and on and on. After my daughter was born, he became even more controlling and he got his mother to look after my daughter while I went back to work. So I had literally had no control. Even yeah. if I wanted to leave, there was no way I could leave because the mother wouldn't let me have my daughter. So everything was controlled and I was trapped in this relationship. He then convinced me that it would be really good if we bought a house together. And when you're being manipulated and mm. you're being continually, you know, it's being put into your head, well, no one else is going to want you and all sorts of things like this. Um, we, we need to buy a house together. Well, I kind of went along with it and we bought a house. Then um, the, the violence continued. Um, even as my daughter was growing up, she kind of witnessed quite a lot, lot of things as a, as a youngster. And he then started an affair. Um, we'd been, been together about four years by, by this point, And I confronted him about it. It's, it's funny that even though there's all this violence going on, he has an affair and that's yeah. the trigger, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the trigger for me to actually stand up and do something. So I confronted him with, with it and he, he got really, th this is when things took a real turn for the worse. They were already pretty bad, but um, he used to drive around his car with a baseball bat in it because he would get into confrontations with people, get, you know, get road rage. Mm -hmm. And I think at, at one point somebody ha had had a pop back at him. So he got a baseball bat and he kept that in the car. Well, he'd brought that into the house. I didn't know this. 
he'd brought that baseball bat into the house and I confronted him with this evidence and I said that's it it's over we're going to split up we can split up fairly it, trying to do everything mm. um, you know that in the normal way that you would if you're splitting up with someone yeah and he didn't think that that would be the right way to do it so he got the baseball bat and he went to to raise it to me um but before that he had locked the front door and he had locked the back door as well and hidden the key so it was all premeditated mm -hmm. he knew exactly what was going to go on and and what was happening and he came out with, with the baseball bat now, as I was running to try and get out the back, I couldn't get out of the front because he was blocking the way. So I ran the other way to the back. I heard a voice and this voice told me where the key was. So I believed at that point it was my guardian angels mm -hmm. trying to help me because had I not been able to get out, yeah. uh, some serious, I, I think he would have killed me. That would have been the moment because there's always that that moment where he's losing control because I've confronted him, found out what he's doing. And, it, you know, it, the, the violence escalated, escalated yeah. at that point. Um, I found the key, managed to get out. I don't know how because I was obviously yeah. in, shock, in fear, but the angels, and I, I know it was the angels that were helping me at that time, they got me out of the house which then allowed me to to scream and neighbors heard and then police were called. Um, and at that point, he took my daughter who had witnessed everything. She was hit, hidden under a table and um, he then left the house. The police were called. This was the first time I had ever called them and ever disclosed to anybody what was going on. I called my parents, told them what was going on and this was kind of that was it that was the turning point and um he came back to the house and the police were there and they arrested him for attempted murder funnily enough i didn't have any marks on me nothing it, it was like it, it he couldn't do it or he he wasn't yeah. able to and i feel that the angels interjected yeah to save me at that point um Things continued. Um, the police let him out um, and he was allowed to come back home. Uh, so I didn't really, this was this was going back many, many years. So maybe yeah. 20 years. So the, the, before all the domestic stuff. That's exactly, place, yeah. exactly. So there wasn't really the help for me. Mm. Um, so I had to go through the, down the domestic route, um, not the domestic route, the civil route, sorry. To, to get help so instructed a solicitor uh, we had to go to court there's many many court cases and he lied the whole way through now I'd had this experience with the angels and I wanted to know a little bit more mm. so I started to talk to people about um, about angels and how I could get them to potentially help me in my situation especially with the court case yeah. I consulted a psychic and they told me that everything was going to be fine I just needed to tell the truth and I was being watched over and protected so that was how I kind of got into the psychic side again mm. um, through seeing th seeing a psychic then someone told me about well you could use the archangels in the courtroom so I thought okay that's interesting and um, so what I did, what they instructed me to do is to put um, Raphael in one corner. You, I think it was uh, Uriel in another corner. Gabriel by his brief for communication. And I think uh, Raphael in an, so I had, my, no, Michael, Raphael, Uriel and Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, so I had those four in, in each corner and right by his, bar he had a barrister um, who was actually a QC, I think, um, representing him. And I put Gabrielle there for communication and the QC could not speak. It was amazing. I was coming across as um, uh, very, uh, very calm, 
very all my words were coming out perfectly yeah. I was making sense I was getting my point across and the judge was you, you know mm. siding with me I had that good rapport with the judge the QC couldn't string a sentence together and this is a, an extremely intelligent person and yet I, I was sitting there like giggling thinking oh my god this is really working yeah <laughs> I just couldn't believe it and he couldn't speak anyway after that, um, the QC was let go <laughs> because he was ineffective. Yeah. There was, you know, he, he'd let, literally lost the case. Um, and I continued to work with the Angels throughout that court case. I won the court case, although I did have to go to the Court of Appeal mm. um, to get things overturned. Um, but won the court case in the end and then kind of went back into corporate, corporate life. Didn't do anything more with the Angels till about 2009 um, when I started to work with them again and learn more about them and work professionally with them. Now, after my experience of being in a domestic um, violent relationship, mm -hmm. domestic violent relationship, I wanted to help other women. Um, and so I uh, applied to join join the police yeah. now yeah. now before that there was a height limit um mm. so you had to be five foot four i believe to join the police now oh, i'm yeah. five foot one i was never going to get any taller no <laughs> well i don't know the angels might uh, to if they wanted you in they might have made you get a bit taller <laughs> yeah but it wasn't going to happen <laughs> and um I was working for a company at the time and we would do what we worked with the police on the radios. So I worked in, in telecommunications and we worked with the radio systems for the police. So it kind of piqued my interest in getting back into the police again. And I did a little bit of research and I found out that they had lifted that height limit. And I thought, woohoo, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to apply. So I did. It took, um, it took a little while to get in because the application process is quite long-winded and it took me about a year to get in. Mm. Um, now, I'm not the fittest of people and you have a fitness test to take. So I failed the first one, but I didn't let that put me off. I thought, right, okay, I've got to up my game. Um, so trained and trained and trained. And um, when I did my next fitness test, I asked the angels to help. And I had a, a, a um, an angel card in my bra and it got me <laughs> to to that, that level 5-4, which is, is yeah. pretty rubbish, but <laughs> hey, <anyhow. laughs> it's, all, <laughs> it's all I could do. Um, anyway, it got me there and I got in and that was it. So the angels again helped me get this job that I really wanted to do to help other women. And um, I started, I absolutely loved it. And um, I was handpicked after about um, a year of being a frontline officer mm. um, to become a specially trained officer dealing with victims of rape and um, serious sexual crime. So I absolutely loved that, that job. Um, while I was doing that job though, my dad suddenly died um, and I was thrown into a, clinical depression um yeah. because of that so i took some time out from the police to heal and in that time i um did some more work with the angels i did some more angel courses i trained with the diana cooper school um as an angel teacher and did an angel practitioner course as well and became a master angel practitioner i trained in nlp hypnotherapy all things to help other people and other women that were potentially going through what i i had been through um i then um after about four years i was out of the police for about four years kind of learning and growing and i opened an, uh, my own spiritual shop as well um within that time yeah with my inheritance that i got from my dad i opened up a little a little shop and i loved it we were seeing people every day doing healings um doing readings it was fantastic i loved it we sold all sorts of things in there as well it's a beautiful shop i loved it anyway the recession kind of took hold 
in 2011 and that closed down I had to, I had to let it go um, but I learned a lot a lot of lessons in that time um, I then um, took another kind of job just to kind of get my feet back back mm. into working full time if you like after having quite a long time out yeah. um, and then I went back to the police um, which was hard they put me back on front line which was very, very difficult for me. Um, and I got a back injury from that. I'm quite short and the, the kit is quite heavy. Yeah. And what it was doing is it was literally pushing my body forward and all my muscles were out of alignment. And it was just too painful for me to wear that because you don't just wear it for a few hours. You're yeah. wearing it for about 11 hours at a time, maybe even longer. Yeah. Um, because you just don't have the, the time to take it off and put it back on. You just you can't do yeah. that. So I, I kind of decided, although I didn't want to, I thought I, I have to leave. I, I, can't, I my, my physical body cannot take this. Yeah. So I left. Um, and after that, I, um, I kind of got back doing all the angel stuff and doing my NLP work and working with clients. In that time, I also um, took a job um, as a trainer, training on mental health, mental health awareness, because I, I'm very passionate about that because of my break breakdown mm. uh, with depression. It, it can happen to anybody. You know, mm. I was very highly motivated, um, always, you, you know, on it. And it can happen to anybody. Yeah. And, and so I wanted to kind of share that and um, help other people. Yeah. So I, I did that for about a year. And now I've been thrown literally back into working. Again, the angels, I think, had something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> Pushing me into working full time. Um, so what I do now is I'm a psychic, um, a psychic consultant. Yeah. Um, and I... I have the ability to read businesses so I can look at a business. I can look at the energy of it and the energy of a person. And I can kind of look at the bigger picture, if you like. And I, I channel information from the angels as well while I'm doing this. And I can kind of give them pointers and tips, what they might not like to look at to grow their business and make more profit doing what they love. So I kind of point them in the right direction. Um, I also run another company helping women that have gone through domestic violence in the past mm. using my NLP skills. So I help people that have gone through trauma yeah. um, because it's so, so close to my heart and I'm so passionate yeah. about it that that's the other side of things that, that I want to help people with. So I run, run two companies at the moment. So yeah. that's my story in a nutshell. Yeah, well, I mean that 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 that's quite quite an awful lot to um, to have in and to and we break it down in the moment. Um, but Joy around me saying hello, ladies. Hello, Joy. Thank you for joining. And Jane says good evening, ladies. Evening, Jane. Um, thank you for watching. Now, don't forget, um, you can ask questions or leave comments. Um, so if there's anything that um, Sheila has been talking about that resonates with you, um, you know, then, then please do. Um, please do let, let us know. And I mean, it just goes to show that, um, you know, how if, if you look at how domestics were treated, of uh, domestic violence was treated all that time ago to how it is now, it's it's certainly Im improved. I mean, when you were working um, as the specialist officer, um, did you notice how things have changed um, when oh, you were yeah. dealing with the victims? Yeah, it, it's changed so much that it, it, the... the um, impetus now is to get women out of that situation whereas for me back then and bear in mind this is 20 some 20 years ago it were the, the the fault was put on me well you're going back there you need mm. to leave but it's my house why can't he leave yeah. I'm, paying, I'm paying for this house i'm paying everything and he's beating me up you know why should i leave and they it was just put back on me. Well, you're not doing this. You're not helping yourself. 
And so I had to go the civil route in the end. That was the mm. only option I had. And that cost £50,000 to, go, to to go through that process. Yeah, so that put me and my 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 family in, into a lot of um a lot of debt because of that yeah. but i didn't have a choice there was no no help for me really um but now it's just so much different you know that they will do everything to get that that woman out of that situation and they will take it out of her hands as well if yeah. she reports it and she then doesn't go ahead with it or withdraws her statement they still have the power now to to enforce it and to to go after that man which yeah. they didn't do that way back yeah yeah but 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 but, but things progress and and, yeah. and and it's and it's good that, that that they did that so all the time you were working in in the police um were the angels and that's still coming through to you um were you still picking up things you know ov obviously with the angels and being psychic did you find that when you went to or when you were dealing with situations or people that you kind of like got bits of information yeah. or knew the right things to say or do? Absolutely, yeah. So I would always have Archangel Michael with me <laughs> and he's the um, he's the, the angel, the Archangel of police officers. Of police officers, yeah. <laughs> and so I would always have him with me. And wherever I went or whoever I was crewed with, we never got into any trouble. Um, I sent the angels ahead um, to go and have a look at a situation before we got there, make sure it was all calm. So normally, by the time I had got there with my colleagues or, or my own, as quite a lot of the time you were single crewed, it would be safe. Um, and I wouldn't get, I, I've never, I've only once been been injured on duty. And that was in the, in the cells when um, a woman you know, kicked off and punched me in the face um and that was probably my own fault <laughs> for expecting <laughs> it yeah. um, but yeah that, so they would always keep me safe every every incident i went to it just would calm down as soon as we, we got there and i was able to read the situation as well so i remember going to a situation where the 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 it was a domestic situation and the guy was pretty agitated now he was a bodybuilder he was probably six foot tall probably more and he was very well built and my the colleague i was with a male colleague and yeah it, it's like i don't know i i kind of find that when i'm with a male colleague they kind of want something to kick off yeah and i don't I would rather calm the situation down and get it sorted. Anyway, I could sense that this guy, he'd blocked, we'd, we'd gone into his house, he'd blocked off the front door so we couldn't get out. And I could sense him, he was getting more and more agitated as my colleague was talking to him. So I took it, uh, I said, hey, let's go and have a chat. Let's uh, tell me about it. Let, let's go off to the other room. So I got him away from the front door and calmed him down because I knew that if I hadn't done that, it would have got quite nasty in there. Yeah. And he would have kicked off and um, he was probably on drugs as well. So wouldn't Yeah, he'd have doubled the strength and yeah, doubled his strength. And there's only I'm only little. Um, although I've got it, you know, um captor and, uh, and all sorts of equipment. I'm only little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you've got a tall guy. It's like, oh, where am I going to get? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're so, strategically placed for him. Exactly. <laughs> so I'd, I'd taken him out of the situation. I'd calmed him down, and we managed to get out of there. And I asked my colleague to go and speak to the woman, and it was fine, you, you know. Yeah. So, again, it's it's using your intuition to help situations like that. And I feel that the angels were helping me every day in that job. You know, I would use them every day. And things like interviewing as well, interviewing skills. Um, I kind of knew when people were lying and when they weren't. Um, and and they, the angels would help me getting the best out of someone and knowing what to say to get the best out of that person. Um, and I was also, the, the job that I did with, um, with victims of serious sexual crime, I was very, very calming with them. 
So I, I got them into a real safe place with me. And I remember one situation that really got to me where a woman had been so uh, systematically um, abused over many, many years that she was starting to talk, but she could only talk about one situation, one incident at a time. And this was the first time she'd been able to talk about any of it. And at the end of the interview, we we got it all on tape for her. And at the end of the interview, she put her arms around me and said, "Thank you for making that so easy for me." And I I went home and I cry on the way home. I was crying yeah. because it just got to me. It just really really got to me. Um, the impact of of mm. that and the impact that it had on her life. Yeah, and and I think sometimes we we forget that if we come at things um, at a calm, soothing, um, listening point of view, you know, okay, I want I want you to tell, you know, I want you, that can really help a, a, a lot of people, rather than forcing it, you sort of like said, okay, talk to me, and that the, the gentle approach, um, you know, does well. it's especially, you know, getting people that haven't spoken about something for such a for such a long time and I think it's something everybody can can do it's it's just taking that step back and going okay I'm going to I'm going to put my attention and really let you talk without interrupting yeah yeah absolutely it was it, it, it's it's just amazing just working with with the angelic energies as well because they are so calming and they just calm the situation down you know i also used them when i was doing medical i didn't personally do the medicals but with, with, <laughs> with the doctors doing the medicals um yeah for for serious sexual crime and i would just ask the angels to come in and calm that that person down and fill the room with with that energy the, the angelic energy so the room was lovely and calm they were calm and because it's not a very nice nice no. thing to have to go through for, for anyone but and then the interview process as well it was just calm uh, for them um yeah, yeah. So i loved just i just love working with the angels yeah and and did it and you know and it's something that everybody can do yeah all uh, because because there are all the angels want you know is, is for you to acknowledge them and talk to them and just allow them to do you know to do what they they you know to help to be of service which is what which is what which is what they they want to do so anybody watching try it just you ask know, just just ask i mean i ask you know parking spaces all the time yep perfect yeah me too yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And if I don't get a parking space, I know there's a reason why I didn't get a parking space in that particular spot. You might come out and you might find the car that is parked there. It's got dirt on it or sticker or, you know, leaves or, or, or something. That if I'd parked there, it would have um, it would have gone on, on, on my car. So evolving from the police mm. um, into – because obviously I suppose – that bit in between where you work in the shop, that that must have really honed your skills as, as well, working um, in a shop with all that energy around you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I absolutely, that, that shop was, again, we had the angels in the shop. Um, you know, they kept the energy really, really calm. And everybody that came in just said, oh, I love it in here. You know, we, we were very close to... Um, uh, the um, what they call the family courts as well mm. and people that were going in to court um, would quite often come in just to buy some crystals and they would stay quite a little while in the shop because the energy was so calming um, and it kind of put them in the right energy and right space to go and deal with that the court case that they had to deal with or you know that they were going to mm -hmm. Go, going into um so yeah the angels really really helped um in in that that environment as well and especially with the treatments you know people were coming in almost you know really really stressed and going out like like they were walking on air um and we also had quite a lot of people that would just come in and 
dump all their problems <laughs> on me <laughs> and then leave feeling happy. <laughs> yeah that, that's the kind of other other side of it um yeah I, think I had so to you lots of cleansing in there all the time then absolutely yeah but i i didn't mind as yeah. long as i knew what was happening and could then go and cleanse myself afterwards it was fine they needed to do it they felt safe doing it it was fine it was the right place for them to do it rather than doing it to their friends or or family <laughs> So how did you find out that you were good at seeing the energy of businesses? Because because that's quite interesting. Because you kind of like think, you know, oh, you can you can tap into energy of, of somebody um, or an animal. But business, would you, do you just look at the business name or, or how, how would you do it? Well, um, what I do, what, what I found is when I was doing um, readings, so I was doing psychic readings, tarot readings and stuff like that, and I was getting a lot of business people coming to me. And as I was reading the cards, I would start to get information, stuff would start to come to me. Or I would, um, for example, a lady came to me who wanted to know if she was on the right track, you know, in her life purpose. And all of a sudden, I was shown exactly what she was, should be doing what would be, you know, a real good fit for her, um, how her business would look, all the the different elements of it, you know, or you'd have a membership site, you'd have a course here, and this is, this, and all the bits would come together. And I just, that's how I, how I saw it. So the angels allow me to see the bigger picture. So I can, it's like I'm looking down and I can see, oh, yeah, you'd be really good at this. And look at all your life skills and all your experience that's led you to a certain point. And this is what it's for. But sometimes people can't see it. Yeah. So it, it's, I'm taking a bird's eye view, if you like, and looking at it and then just piecing it all together and helping them. Um, kind of do what what they they are here to do basically and 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 just get on and do it um sometimes businesses have major decisions that they might need to make or they might want me to look at their staff what's going on with this staff member so i can again go in psychically and look at what's going on with that person should they be doing a different job um what might help them um and looking at their business decisions, how is that going to work for me? Is this the right thing for me? It just all kind of just, I just see it from a different perspective. Yeah. That's the only way I can explain it. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's so, 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 I just like the, you know, the, the view looking down. It's like, oh, I can see that there, see that, that there, that, 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 that. yeah, I've, I've got this image in my head of this, like, <laughs> like, like this, Woo, looking down. Yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> kind of how it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, so that that's that's that is that is that is pretty cool. Um, looking at people's business because I think a lot of people forget about that, don't they? It's kind of like, what what am I supposed to be um, doing rather than looking at the whole the whole picture? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and sometimes people have kind of gone down a route that they think is right for them, or other people have thought is right for them. And their heart is just not not in it. Um, I had one lady come to me who was she was almost on the brink of suicide because she just felt so lost. She just didn't want to be here anymore. And doing s certain things like looking um, at the bigger picture, if you like, doing things like past life regression and future life progression as well. We kind of mapped out her business in a day. Mm. It, it was just amazing, and she left knowing that she's going to write a book what that book's about and knowing that she's going to be speaking on spay on on stage and the subject is something she'd never have put put in her yeah. you know, she never thought of it was completely not something she's doing now but it was all the path you know her path is actually leading her there she just needed someone to kind of snap it all in for her so do you find it easier to read other people's businesses than your own or do you find it quite easy to read your own as well no I can read other people's I cannot read my own 
Sam. <laughs> yeah. You you would have thought they'd have gone, okay, we'll we'll let you know what you're supposed to be doing. Well, I think they have. It's reading other people's. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, 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 in a random in a, in in, yeah. a, in in a roundabout way. Yeah. Now as you know, um, I do uh, guided meditations, angel cards, and I like to um, ask my guests would they like a mini guided meditation and angel card. And this week, you're actually going to get two card readings because Sheila has very kindly offered to do us a reading. Now, is this with your Oracle deck or is this with another deck? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it with my, my the deck that I created. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it with that deck. The sensitive yeah. soul wisdom cards i will do it with yeah that's been how do you come up with um and how how did the card the cards come about this came about from an idea i had um just after i'd done my angel course actually i literally channeled it um and then i sat on it for about five years didn't do anything with it so i kind of channeled it in about 2011 i had um all the the cards that I wanted to produce you know what was on them um and then I just did them I, I just five years later I thought it's time I'm gonna do it they just sat there let's get it done so I just did it so did you design them all yourself or did you get someone to do the designs so they're photographs um that I have had taken mm -hmm. and then I've had a graphic artist um, overlay graphics onto them so they all started as a photograph okay and then someone has uh, my graphic designer has kind of done a little bit of magic on them if you like um, all the words uh, or the the card meanings and um, the words underneath I have come up with so I've channeled mm -hmm. those yeah um, but the designs are photographs from my life um, I'm in some of them my daughter's in some of them my dogs are in some of them Oh. Um, yeah they're pretty uh i i, I love them <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 pretty cool and uh yeah one day i'll do my own deck <laughs> and uh I, I, i've got you know obviously i post angel sayings every day and i've been posting them for, for years now so i've got loads of stuff really that i could i could take and put in print cast number one day when the time's right yeah when the time's right so, yeah, how do we work with your cards? So, I will shuffle and mm -hmm. then I will pull a card that is for, for everybody. So, this is a card Brilliant. for everybody. Something that we might need to be looking at. Something that might um, be... <laughs> um, something for us to, to know about. So, what we have is time to detox. Okay. So... The card says, cleanse your aura from psychic debris with a relaxing salt bath. So how often do we pick up other people's stuff and not do anything about it? So we can go, um, you know, along our day um, interacting with people. And I kind of spoke about this, uh, about what was going on with me while I was in the shop. People literally putting all their stuff. Yeah. In. So what the angels are saying is we need to look after our self-care. We need to remember to you know have those salt baths cleanse our aura get rid of all the stuff that builds up because if we don't that's when we're going to start to feel tired that's when we're going to start to feel drained so the angels are reminding us that we've got to look at you've got to put ourselves first so yeah. always we have to come first okay and let's see what we're going to add to that with the um with my card and that um so um what do we need to know for our highest good to work in conjunction with sheila's cards what do we all need to know i think that one's going to and we have which i think actually works in quite nicely grace and gratitude through gratitude joy expands we do that so there we go so it's a, it is with when you're doing the, um, the the cleansing, it's actually grace and gratitude that you've been able to help somebody else by taking away um, the energy that no longer serves them, um, where you've been of service. Um, so you then cleanse um, that that energy um, away, and as you do, 
the joy inside you will actually come out of you being of service to other people. So um, yeah, so 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 yeah, so it, if you are picking up other people's energies, and um, and that as long as you remember to um, cleanse, as as Sheila said, you are actually being of service because you're helping that person feel better without them realizing that you're helping them feel better. Yeah. If that makes sense. Absolutely, yeah. It does that does work quite well, doesn't it? Together. Yeah. 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 That's the angel. That's the that's yeah. the angel. They they do all all those those kinds of things. So Sheila, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers at all? Insights or thoughts? Yes, uh, last word or anything that you think might be important. Um, yeah. So even in your darkest times, even when things are you know you think you can't get out of it just know that the angels are there and they will support you they will show you how to get out of the situation you're in but you have to ask because they can't inter intervene so you must ask them but they will take you to where you are meant to be in life so always um even if things are so dark they're not going to be like that forever yeah and your story is an inspiration um, with, you know, with regards to that, with what you went through to um, what you are now with, with the angels helping, you know, and even telling you where the key was. I know. You know, I mean, when you said that, I literally got shivers all the way, um, all, all, all the way through my body um, and that. Um, so everyone, I hope you enjoyed the, um, this conversation and found it insightful and the words of wisdom Sheila's given you will help you further on your journey. So Sheila, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? And are you running any courses or anything or, you know, is they get via Facebook, via your website, how, how do they get in touch with you? So you can contact me via, um, uh, my web website which is www.sheilakadir.com or via Facebook where I am the Entrepreneurs Intuitive and I will um, do a lovely discount for anybody that kind of wants to have a look at their business um, and, and wants me to kind of have a real kind of deep dive into their business so I will do that at a discount for them so normally they are because I, I tune in beforehand so it's probably about two hours work but I will do that for people for 99 pounds if they want it um, oh, that's lovely but, yeah yeah oh that, thank you thank you thank you very much um yeah and Jane agrees with what we're saying about our skin our skin the angels so um so yeah, no, and thank you, thank you for that offer. Um, so yeah, anybody, um, you know, take it up. Just, just say to Sheila, you know, that you've you've seen this show, um, and and take her up on the offer. That's that's very generous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I would like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And they might take inspiration from Sheila's story and actually get out of any abusive relationships um, they, they, may, they may be in. Now, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help in finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call with me so we can talk about what's going on in your life and how I can help you. And I look forward to you all joining me next Monday at 8 p.m. where I'll be talking to my guest, Michelle Bard, about freedom to transform with horses, which should be um, a pretty interesting um, conversation. So um, again, thank you so much, Sheila, for, for being part, for being my guest. And thank you to everyone who's watched and said hello. And remember, we will come back and monitor any questions or comments if anybody watches this at a later date. So just type hashtag replay, write a uh, comment or question, and we will get back to you. So again, thank you everyone for watching. Oh, yeah, Jane again says thank you, ladies. Thank you for watching, Jane. It's been it's been lovely having you here, and thank you for saying hello. So I'll say goodbye. And again, thank you, Sheila, for being part of the show. And I'll Very see well. everyone next week. Bye.